Hi everyone, I'm Trufman from Open Benchable Project and in this special edition of the podcast we're joined by Justin. Hey Justin, what's uh, what's up? How are you doing? Yeah, good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for your time being here with us uh, today. Uh, actually, the reason I wanted to talk to you is because I recently saw some pictures of your wet bench PC1 mode and I wanted to, to reach out and see uh, what was the story behind it. You're a case modder. Uh, some people know you from previous competitions, but for anyone that is the first time hearing about you, like who are you, Justin? Yeah, no worries. Um, I'm Justin. I'm um, I come from Australia. I live in Sweden. I've been here for the last 10 years. Um, from which point, when I moved here, it's when I started looking into making my PC a little bit better. You know, via um, overclock.net. I was on that forum all the time and checking out the cable sleeving guides and tutorials um, by by Lutro. If you remember Lutro, it's quite a quite an old guy now, I suppose. Um, the idea was just to make my PC as nice as possible, so I started off with sleeving some cables and mounting my SSDs on some. Uh, gloss black acrylic and and basically the career has gone from there like um, I've been modding for over 10 years 11 years something like that it's been quite a long time um, I've managed to pick up uh, a lot of sponsors and along the way a lot of friends as well like from these different companies as marketing representatives and you know they move between companies and whatnot it's it's great to have those contacts um, like still still be able to speak with those people even though they're outside the industry or whatever their situation may be but also being part of the modding community as a whole especially here in sweden it's a very tight-knit community it's so, a very powerful one as well I mean, it, sweden has some of the best case modern and i would say i would not say the best because it's very hard to to define but sweden has some of the best case modern and i remember like dreamhack always have like a they used to have by Sweet Lockers the um, competition, the case mod competitions. Yeah, yeah. There's so. a there's a case modding competition there, and I've I've participated in the competition a few times myself, and I've also been the judge in the competition um, on a pair on a couple of occasions now. So it's it's been very nice to to sit on both sides of the fence. But at the same time, these people who are other modders are also my friends, and to judge their computers against each other, um, it's quite of a of a nerve-wracking uh, experience, so to speak. Um, but our our relationships are great, and um, it's 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 been a wild ride. I've been in the, in this modding biz for ten years. Um, I'm classed as a professional modder, and in that aspect, I do have regular sponsors who supply um, components for me to build with, or. Um, in other instances where they would actually commission me to build a PC for them. So, for example, NVIDIA or Corsair have contacted me and asked me to build um, on commission in one of their newest cases or using their newest products to help promote their products on social media. Um, so that's basically what I do. And I, I build computers not as a living. I have a family on the side. I have um, I have a job. I study. Um but a lot of my free time, my, my hobby is building computers. And then in the off time, I may get to spend two or three hours a week gaming. Um, so that's, you, it's you good... still find the time for it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, I, I try to make the time. You know, gaming was my passion before PC gaming. And I have friends who, who are in the PC gaming. So um, I, I, I find the time for it uh, among all of the other commitments that I have as well. And that's interesting. You consider yourself to be a professional case modder, but that is not your full-time job. No, uh, that's right. So that's interesting to see that it's a very handful of people that can actually turn that into a full-time job for a few that's reasons, right. either because of uh, the the amount of requests that they get or by the the fact that they want to keep that as a hobby as well. And That's right, yeah. Um, it. I have been... Um, I, I have started my own company as Metallic Acid Customs, um, and that company I've had a cup for a couple of years now. Um, at one point, I was modding full time, but the, uh, the the amount of projects that you can count on during a year is quite unpredictable because it's really influenced by what products are being released and when. 
Um, and especially now during the whole pandemic, there's no um, there's no trade show like like Computex. There's no DreamHack. Um, there's nowhere to actually show these computers. So the marketing material, uh, the marketing budget for having these PCs live at shows is no longer a thing at the moment. So, yeah, I mean, everyone's been affected and I've had to change my strategy of what I'm going to do. So I'm, I'm still modding. It's just on a part time basis instead. <laughs> well, that's uh, that's pretty good. So that that part time, like how long does it take you per, per, per week? Because you game three hours a week. But how much time do you spend modding or actually working on a possible mod? Well, if I'm not actually down here with a screwdriver and mounting hardware into a chassis, then either I'm um, speaking strategy with uh, sponsorship partners, planning new projects, or 3D designing um, a project which I would like to propose or one that's already been um, confirmed. So there's there's always there's always projects there's always modding or something that's PC related, but it may not exclusively be standing here and putting screws into standoffs, uh, mounting a motherboard into a chassis, so to speak. All right, Justin. So let's dive into your your case mod, the Wedbench BC1 based on the Open Bench table. Um, what would what would be the mod, and how you would you, would you describe that? Uh, for someone that cannot actually see the picture if they are just listening to the podcast. No worries. Well, um, the the open bench tables BC1, that's the, the chassis. It's a test bench, <clears throat> and it is a test bench which is uh, designed for air-cooled systems or um, all-in-one cooled systems. Now, basically, there's enough room for an MITX, MATX, or uh, ATX uh, motherboard with a space of the two graphics cards, uh, mount a PSU, some SSDs, and maybe some 120 millimeter fans or um, all-in-one system, depending on how you wish to configure it. This particular chassis I've had, I've owned for quite a few number of years. I was one of the first to actually get one of these uh, samples sent out where I did a review on it. And I had always thought about, always wished to, to water cool with this particular bench. Um, obviously, some modding would be need would be needed to uh, to have been performed um, in the case of making custom brackets, uh, whether that be like manufacturing from aluminium or steel or three D printing or whatever. Um, it's one of those projects that's always been sitting there, like on the shelf, but I've just never had the time to do it. And every time that I've been between ch uh, cases. With my case mods, I've always had the same hardware, and that's followed between case to case. Um, every time I've mounted it onto the wet bench, or what I call now the wet bench, I've always tried to configure a water cooling loop, but then in the end decided, now I'll put it off to another time. Um, so this is the fourth attempt that I've built a computer, and it's the first time I'm able to to get a loop, a water cooling custom loop, which I actually enjoy and and like having on this system. So it cannot take you like like three or four years and four attempts to actually finally make something out of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I've had many like the, I usually have water cooled systems, but every single time I have had to take off the water box and put on an air cooler instead, just because I couldn't configure the system right. Um, I think one of the turning points as to the reason why I could uh, water cool this system is because of the the EK Waterblocks Quantum um, FLT Reservoir Pump Combo, the rectangular flat reservoir. Um, I'm actually looking at the PC now. And the way that it sits, I've got it mounted off the side at an angle. And depending if you orientate it like in these photos that I have here, which is standing upside down with the reservoir on the side, um, I can also flip it down so that's laying on top of the radiators and the pump and reservoir combo still works in that orientation as well. So I can flip the computer how I want, depending on what mood I'm in. Um, I think that's a pretty cool aspect. And, and so so yeah. for everyone that is only on, on audio, so you use the open bench table upside down and vertical as well. So you, you flip it twice, basically. And yeah. having this uh, reservoir slash pump combo allowed you to actually put it in different position because it doesn't really matter, right? That's right. The only way that I can't have the um, the entire PC is standing 
um, as if the text was the right way up, as if the text was readable. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's because the pump would be at the top of the reservoir. So then the pump won't have any flow of water and the pump, the pump could die. So that's, that's definitely not a good thing. That's, uh, that's interesting. So um, let's describe on the mode and, and what is on there. Actually, like, what is the configuration you're using and what are the, the other components that you have in there? Absolutely. Um, well, I've got the EK FLT flat reservoir, as I mentioned, that's hanging off um, a couple of 120 millimeter Be Quiet Silent Wings 3 fans. I have six of those, um, and both of them are in a push configuration. Three fans are attached to one radiator each. So there are two um, EK Waterbox 360 millimeter Cool Stream PE. So they're the ones which are, I believe, 40 millimeters thick. Uh, on the on the dimension, um, there's a 1250 watt uh, in-win classic power unit. So it's got too much power, but I like the power anyways. Um, cable mod pro cables, black with black combs for that all black aesthetic. It's very nice. Um, there's a 9900K which has a um, an EK water blocks velocity um, block. It's actually nickel plated and acetyl. Mm -hmm. So it has a nickel plated bit, which is uh, inset. It's really nice. And the EK logo lights up with RGB. Um, Asus ROG Formula Z390. Probably got the order mixed up there, but the Z390 Maximus 11 formula. And this is the one which has the VRM cooling on it. And um, yeah, you have water cooling, which goes in and out of that. And that's designed by EK water blocks as well, but that's shift with the motherboard. That's the one that comes so directly part... built in and you just have that's to right. plug it if you want to, to cool down the VRMs. Exactly. Otherwise it, it, it does have a couple of stop caps. And so if you don't have that water cool, it still cools the VRM efficiently because it's, it's copper and it still, you know, transfers the heat. Um, 32 gigabytes of T-Force, um, I think it's called the Extreme ARGB, it's 3200 megahertz. Um, it lights up purple and it has RGB. Um, if it does RGB, it's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the RAM sticks in default is a very, very dark shade of purple. Depending on if you shine light directly on it, it looks purple. But if you're not shining light directly on it, it just looks, um, it just looks black and it melts in. Um, and it has this really cool, like, it has these center strips uh, along the length of the uh, RAM sticks, and it lights up above and below these lines. And it, it, it's a pretty cool effect. Um, NVIDIA uh, RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition with a Velocity uh, water block on that as well by EK Water Blocks. Um, I chose for the, the black acetyl version, so to, to tie in with the black and silver theme. Um, torque fittings by EK, the zero maintenance tube by EK, um, I've done a mix of um, like the silver torque compression fittings with um, black angled adapters. So I think it's a cool contrast. And uh, there are two Samsung 970 Pro 512 gigabyte uh, SSDs as well, and they're linked in RAID 0. That's a, that's a pretty solid config. So that's your daily driver? That's my daily driver, yeah. That's that's a good one. <laughs> it's 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 pretty good. Um, I've got a couple of I've got a new project coming up. It's got the it's got updated hardware. So um, as soon as I get in the last couple of parts, and I'll be upgrading to that one, and and this one will be decommissioned. No, unfortunately, yeah. Uh, so so it's kind of like the the last time that it's being uh, built up this way. Then pretty pretty much. I mean, the test bench I'll still have. And um, in regards to how I've mounted the radiators, which we'll get into in a minute, I suppose, um, that will be perfected in the next version um, and maybe some other improvements as well. Uh, actually, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's actually a good point. Um, actually, let's dive into the, uh, the way you hook the radiator. So you have the bench table upside down. So the CPU is at the bottom. And that's right. what is called the bottom of the bench table is actually on top. And That's right. you have, uh, so I guess, uh, can, can you have pictures where you have the PSU? So I guess you hook the PSU to the feet on the top and you put two radiators in the back as well, which is basically underneath the table. But those radiators are a little bit, uh, are actually uh, taller 
than the size of the feet. So that's so how did you correct. came around with that? Well, it all just started out with me like dry fitting. I, I just sat the bench on top of my two radiators and I realized that the PSU is is not uh, well, it, there's enough clearance for me to be able to lay the, the table down or to stand it up. Unfortunately, I haven't got any photos of the PSU um, within this gallery, so I can't actually show that. I forgot to take those photos. Um, shame on me. Um, but basically, you have the two radiators standing parallel, and then you have this, the PSU, which is situated in the middle, and there's roughly about 30 millimeters clearance between uh, the, the radiate, each radiator and the PSU walls. Um, and then underneath the PSU is where I've got a couple of cables coiled up, um, which is the access, which um, which is obviously not needed. Okay, That's, so so you basically did a sandwich between the two radiators, the PSU in the middle, and the two radiators are pushing inside, uh, in terms of airflow. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, exactly. They're pushing inside, and because the P, the um, the actual case is standing on its side, as as pictured here, then heat convection um, takes over, so the heat naturally rises, and also the PSU is drawing air from um, from from behind the system. It's it's sucking air from like just cold air, not from the radiator, so to speak. Whereas in a typical orientation, you would have the PSU fan flipped so that it's sucking air from underneath the motherboard tray. Um, instead of the configuration that I have, so basically it's it's a silent machine even under load at this point. Well, I guess with two radiators and everything vertical, I bet it's silent. <laughs> it's it's very nice. These the, these fans are they have a very nice tone to them as well. They don't they don't have that audible whining sound that some fans have when when spinning under low RPMs. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's an interesting bit. So that is interesting. So as you did not use the provided brackets, how did you actually fit the table upside down, keep it like this, and add the radiators actually fixed at the bottom? Oh, actually, the well, back now. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll start with the, the conventional mounting um, before I get into the radiators. Um, the PSU is mounted with the original foot that the PSU mounts in. So that's that's still installed on the chassis itself. Um, the PSU is mounted as low as possible on the bottom mounting foot, and that's to keep the weight, the center of gravity, low. And that's the reason why I can stand the table up on its side, because there's so much weight down the bottom, including the water, the PSU, the radiators, that if even if I tilt it like 20 degrees towards me, it won't actually, um, it won't tip over under its own weight. So there's absolutely no problem that this machine is going to fall over, fall over at any time because it purely isn't. Um, maybe uh, there we have a lit picture as well. Um, the radiators, um, quite a funny story. Um, I had spent some time, a lot of time, making a 3D printed bracket or something that I would be able to design up and bend with a metal bender and, and cut out and um, and, and attach the radiators to the actual chassis bottom itself. And I couldn't find the profile aluminium that I wanted and my 3D printer uh, mechanism for feeding the filament into the nozzle stopped working. So I had no other option but to resort to double-sided tape. Uh, I have a couple of spots of double-sided tape sticking the radiators to the bottom of the BC1, and would you believe it? It holds. Like, I've lifted this... PC up without coolant so, in it, and I've shaken it. So you lift it with the double-sided tip holding the radiators. Uh, yeah, that is insane. Well, yeah. obviously, like I, I put my thumbs on the BC on the table itself at the same time I'm lifting by the radiators. Mm -hmm. um, but during the photo shoot, I'm spinning it around, I'm, I'm flipping it, I'm, you know, I'm doing all of these weird things that you don't normally do with a test bench on its side with double-sided tape stuck to the radiators. Uh, but it holds. It holds surprisingly well. And I'm just afraid that when it's time to remove the radiators, that they're probably going to take off a bunch of paint with them as well. So I'll have to... Um... Well, well, for sure, <laughs> the paint will not come up from the bench table because it's uh, completely anodized. Well, that's, so that one, you're, that's you're anodized, sure that's yeah, not going to yeah. move? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure the BC one will be completely unscathed after this. But um, yeah, they're, they're, there's probably going to be paint removed from the radiators. But I have a tactic. I'm going to warm up the tape first. I'm going to pull out my heat gun after removing the fans or whatnot, heat it up, and then I'll slowly pry it off. Maybe squirt in some isopropyl alcohol as well and 
give it a good wedging. <laughs> well, let us know how that <laughs> so turns, uh, turns out to be uh, when you actually uh, unmount that system to uh, to upgrade all the <laughs> all the parts. Um, what was the um, so so you were talking that you use that system in between case mods and you add this as a daily you use this as a daily driver. It, it took you years before actually going over and using double-sided tape to fix a problem that you spent hours designing and, and never actually uh, uh, made in there. Um, uh, was there something special? Like, how is the fact that it's upside down only came because of the radiator or that's something that you wanted to have as a look? Like the old, I think that was the uh, BTX or DTX uh, form factor that had the motherboard ups, uh, upside down. Well, I did want the upside down text. I know that it gets a lot of um, a lot of comments and there's a lot of controversy behind it. So I wanted to have that discussion as well, and it sort of helps improve the um, the hit rate of what people think and what people say, and it gets in more people's eyes. Um, I could have easily flipped the radiators around so that these fittings, uh, which are currently up top, but they 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 would be down the bottom, so to speak, that they will be above the motherboard. Um, but I didn't like the way that the tubing runs were very short. Um, so I thought I'd... Oh, so the bend was not as smooth. Yeah, as no, that's, that's right, because I didn't have that flow as what it's seen in this particular photo here. The, the, short, the runs between the radiator and the CPU or the VD, v, VRM um, were much shorter, and I just didn't like the way they looked because um, it, it just didn't talk to me, but with this particular way, with the long tubing, it runs, it, it kind of looks like hydraulic hoses and that's kind of the look that I was going for, uh, when I designed this or when I was putting it together. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty sweet move. So besides the radiators and the double sided tip, uh, were there any other challenges that you, that you encountered and you basically fix it? Like, is there any... Well, spicy stories behind. behind no, this. it it was actually it was relatively pain free. Um, the one of the biggest hindrances was um, not only just like how I was going to mount the the radiators. So I learned how to do CAD and um, I, I made up a sufficient three D printed device um, or mounting mechanism which would definitely work. Um, but I think the one of the biggest um, things that I didn't like about the original versions. Uh, when I did this a couple of times before was the fact that the the reservoirs are always tube style and there had been other BC ones which had tube style re uh, reservoirs and pump combos. So I really wanted to try and stay away from that particular style. I didn't think it it suited the industrial style either. Uh, so I've tried it out and I didn't have a real way of mounting the radiators, but I had this configuration in mind. But whenever I mounted the tube radiator, it just it fell apart. So... I thought I'd, I'd wait. I put it off. I might put a radio, a, a reservoir somewhere else, and maybe mount it above the graphics card, or you know something like that. But in the end, as soon as this reservoir came out and I had it in my hands, I thought I'd try it out, and it's definitely a look that I love. That's uh, and and it's a square. The the ratio is very similar as well. Yeah, in I'm, terms of uh, of radius for the for the angles and design. So the look and feel is pretty consistent. Yeah, I mean it, it has that angle as well, and the fact that it's on these hinges. Um, which is above and below the reservoir, it can actually flap and move about. So depending on the orientation of the case itself, the reservoir adjusts itself. So I can, oh, you know, it's it's just a feature. You know, I can I can make it I can make it flap, and it feels nice. <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like that's the best argument ever, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, you you do what feels good. So that's what oh, that's, that's what uh... feels nice for me. That's wonderful. Um, how much time did it took you to actually uh, put it together? Because I guess you saved a lot of time. I mean, don't count <laughs> designing the C80 models that you never use. But no, all right. <laughs> globally, like how much time did that took you to, to set it up? Well, I had this set up within two days. And that's because I had started this on a Wednesday and I wanted to play games on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I had the 3D designs already made though, and I spent maybe... Uh, 10 hours on designing and and testing some things. I've got a couple of test samples which I had tried on before, um, but then but then when it came come time time to crunch and I got the invite to play some games. I'm right. All right, all right that's it. Stuff it. 3D printer is busted. I'm gonna put some tape on this. Um, <laughs> I'll fix it up. I'll put some tubes on, and then maybe 10 minutes before the before I was gonna start playing. That's when I had the water filled and it was bleeding. So. 
Um, not not much time in actual build, but that's because I had the, the several years of thinking and tinkering behind me. I could just come in rehearsed and then get it done. <laughs> and then the execution was flawless. Yeah, and yeah, thank yeah. you, Double Sided Tape, for that. Thank you, Double Sided Tape, for that. Um, also worthy to note, there is, um, there's a, a tube run between the two radiators as well, and that holds them parallel to each other. Okay, so that is basically what is holding them on the other side. Well, yeah, holding them parallel, yes, but yeah. it's, it wouldn't hold. Well, them. you will not end. No, you will not take that as an end. No, anyway, definitely but. not. <laughs> um, but that, that's actually one of the things I wanted to do was um, to to mount a handle on the top part, and that was going to be mounted where the top two screws where the PSU is mounted. Um, so it would mount in the same ones. I just use longer screws to go through to the the PSU mounting hole, um, and have a handle that way. Um, but there's there's many ideas, and the next time the next time, not if, but when I rebuild this system, uh, when I'm between cases in like a year or so, I'll probably implement those changes and make it even better. So actually, speaking of of the future, well, so what's the plan with that? So you can upgrade you can upgrade the hardware, but uh, do you have any other plans on improving specifically on that design? That's something you you want to pursue as well. Um, I like the design. Uh, I don't think I'll in I won't change the design, but I'll make improvements to make the design more robust um, in regards to the the actual mounting mechanisms behind uh, the BC one to the radiators, for example. Uh, I know that that street uh, not street um, open bench tables actually have a 3D printing community which is fantastic. Everyone goes online and they share their work and you can download it. It goes straight onto your BC1. It sounds like a promoting pitch for the, the company now, but it's actually it's actually quite cool. I know that a, a lot of other companies have tried to create the same type of maker space, but haven't, haven't succeeded as well as the BC1 uh, community space. And that's because it's, it's so much of a niche. This is so niche to overclocking. Um, that many people jump on that niche and really like just get down to the nitty gritty and you know they they like to share and they like to sort of you know be part of that experience and so sh should should we expect to have your your drawing available for the community uh, once you test it Ab absolutely as, as soon as they're ready um, as soon as I have them printed and I know it works and it's tested then yeah I'll I'll put them out and I'll have some videos and. Um, I think it'd be a pretty cool experience as well to be also part of that community, not just sort of take ideas and you know, just just stalk in the background. <laughs> well, it took you three years, but at least you did it. So, you know, it's fine. <laughs> four, four years, four years. Four years, yeah, four years, true. <laughs> awesome. Uh, well, th thank you, Justin, for sharing with us all these uh, interesting bits and bytes. Like, I, I love to hear about the, um, the, the backstory of people I have with it. I mean... As one of the co-founders of the project, it's always nice to see that people use it and what people build with it. Um, let's talk a little bit more about your future, like out of other modes. Well, there's always live competitions, or not live, uh, there's always online competitions. Um, if I have a project timeline which lines up with a project uh, with, a, with a competition, then I would like to enter. Um, but I am usually very slow and methodical with my mods at this particular point in, in my modding career. Uh, so I would like to definitely take part in a competition and, um, you know, compete with my latest and greatest. But at that point, it may not be finished or it may not, uh, I may be waiting on parts or whatever. So um, it's been, I haven't been participating in many events lately. Um, on the building front, though, I am, um, I've, I've just finished this test bench. Well, I've actually finished this test bench three months ago. It took me um, three months to get around taking the photos. And that's that's kind of like how shoddy my time frame is. It's like, okay, now I have a day to take photos. Let's do it. And that, it doesn't happen very often, I tell you, when I have a family and kids and study and, um, and job and all that type of stuff. But yeah, this one's been finished for a while. Um, I have my Mobius project, which is made by Yule Beast. Um, that was recently finished and posted on social media. That was finished back in November, I'd like to say. Um, the photos were posted maybe two months ago. And I'm just about to finish. I, like, I'm, I just need to attach the water block. I finally got a 3000 series water block. Uh, sorry, a graphics card. So I just need to attach the water block to the graphics card and then mount that into the system. A quick, uh, attach some quick disconnects, get it bled, um, 
and then put in a LCD screen for hardware monitoring, and then that fin that project is finished, and it's going to be very nice. It's creme de la creme, fantastic. It's using the the InWin collaboration uh, with EK909. It's got the 909 EK. It's that silver beast. It's only 200 made. Has a, a water manifold as a motherboard plate. I, it's so beautiful. Like this, this case is that will be my. That's why I'm, I'm swapping this BC one for that one because you just can't compete. It's this is mm, <laughs> so nice. Um, and then apart from that, I want to start working on a whole room mod, and this includes um, getting in a CNC router, which is more st uh, stable and reliable. I currently have one now. It's running on Arduino hardware, and I don't class it as being any good or worthwhile to be used, unfortunately. So um, it's more for woodworking projects instead of cutting aluminium and acrylic like I would like to do. Um, so that's a, quite a big machine. It's, it's one meter by one meter. Um, the new machine is coming in in a couple of weeks, and it's a much smaller footprint, so at least 50% of the footprint. It will still do everything that I wanted to do. Um, and with that comes a bit of a dynamic change within my workshop where I want to have more of a gaming space with um, maybe two computers in LAN so that my kids can also come down and they can play Minecraft together or whichever game they wish to play. Besides when they're very gory, like, you know, they can't play Call of Duty because they're like five and six and eight years old. What about Doom Eternal? No yeah, no, 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 no Doom Eternal. They can wait at least two years. Uh, <laughs> um, but the, the whole room dynamic will change. I'm going to put up some new walls, paint the walls, uh, put in a, a new door in here and separate the modding section from, uh, well, like the hard, the heavy tool section from, from the actual gaming room. And I'm going to put up some RGB lights and make it really cozy down here. So... Um, that's a really big project that I'll be kicking off within the next couple of weeks. So there's going to be a lot of video content and stuff um, with that project. So, um, yeah, my PC will be completed. It'll be showcased in there. Um, then the whole room set up. And then after that, I'll, I'll see what projects I decide to pick up. I don't know how long the room project is going to take. So <laughs> I, I don't want to promise myself for doing projects which I don't have time for and just stress myself out. <laughs> so, so we just have to wait for the pictures to show up. And yeah. we will figure it out. Uh, speaking <laughs> of pictures to show up, where can we find you online? Right. So I don't have a website. I did have one, but I just really didn't pay any attention to it, unfortunately, because of the time factor. Um, I do post on my Facebook, which is Metallic Acid, Metallic Acid Customs PCs. Um, I have an Instagram with the same name. Um, there I have more in-progress shots of exactly what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Um, I have a Twitter account, which I don't use. If you want to go follow that, it's at Justin Olsen. Um, that's also linked on my Facebook. Um, and yeah, I have I have Facebook, um, Facebook, Instagram. I have a YouTube as well, but that's also neglected up until this point because I haven't had the proper equipment to do the filming. So um, with the whole room modding going to happen, that's when I'll start kickstarting my YouTube uh, channel as well. That's also Metallic Acid Customs. So I'm hanging around either of those four, but mostly on Instagram and YouTube. That's uh, that's right, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, that's where we can see your projects and uh, catch up with the latest news from your side. Uh, well, that's right. Justin, thank you very much for your time and sharing all this, uh, yeah. this nitty bitty stories about the uh, the web page PC yeah. one. Um, we thank wish you. you all the best to finish the new uh, the new gaming room in time. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, if you have any other updates on if, for the project, let us know. We're always happy to, uh, to discuss and see uh, what is going. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, thanks for having me. It's been nice to have a, a chat about my stuff, <laughs> about my projects. Awesome. Have a great day. Bye-bye.